Welcome to our channel, the hub of thoughtful critique and analysis. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more insightful content. Let's delve into the peculiar fascination of Richard Eden and King Charles with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. It's an intriguing spectacle to say the least, a fixation that seems to overshadow their own roles and responsibilities. Firstly, consider Richard Eden, a journalist with an unyielding interest in the lives of Meghan and Harry. One can't help but question the motivation behind this relentless pursuit of every minute detail in the couple's life. Is it simply the allure of a good story, or is there more to it? Does this obsession not seem a tad excessive, even for a royal correspondent? Moving on to King Charles, his focus on the couple appears equally, if not more, intense. The monarch, it seems, has a significant portion of his attention diverted towards Meghan and Harry, which is rather puzzling. As a figure of such importance, one would expect his concerns to be more focused on his reign and duties, rather than the personal lives of his family members. Now let's consider the effect of this obsession. It paints a rather unflattering picture of both Richard Eden and King Charles. The relentless scrutiny, the constant speculation, it all creates an environment of negativity and pressure around Meghan and Harry. And what does it say about those who perpetuate this environment? It speaks volumes about their priorities, their values and their understanding of their roles. The irony is that this obsession does not seem to be reciprocated. Harry and Meghan have made it clear that they are not interested in the constant spotlight, the relentless scrutiny, and the endless speculation. They've chosen a different path, one that prioritises their privacy and their family's well-being. So it's clear that the obsession of Richard Eden and King Charles with Meghan and Harry is both unseemly and unproductive. It's a fixation that serves no real purpose, and in the grand scheme of things, only detracts from the roles and responsibilities that should truly command their attention. Now, let's delve into the recent Christmas invitation controversy. Imagine, if you will, a Christmas gathering, a time of joy, love and family. Now, picture a father, in this case King Charles, supposedly not being sufficiently close to his own son, Prince Harry, to extend a Yuletide invitation. This narrative is being peddled by none other than Richard Eden, Eden's claim is not just an affront to the timeless tradition of family, but it also paints a rather dismal picture of King Charles as a father. It's the season of goodwill, and yet we're expected to believe that a rift, no matter how deep, would prevent a father from reaching out to his child. Eden's claim does more than just stir the pot of controversy. It showcases a rather unpalatable side of King Charles, one that seems devoid of fatherly affection. It's a stark contrast to the image of a loving, caring parent we'd hope to see, especially during the festive season. Moreover, let's consider the sheer pettiness of this claim. It's Christmas, a time that's supposed to bring out the best in us. Yet, here we have Eden stirring up drama, using the season of peace and goodwill as a stage for his narrative. The claim also seems to conveniently ignore the fact that Prince Harry has made it clear he's not exactly pining for the royal life he left behind. So, even if King Charles were to extend an invitation, who's to say Harry would accept it? In this scenario, Eden's claim reduces the royal family to a soap opera, where Christmas invitations become a tool for public spectacle rather than a gesture of love and reconciliation. His narrative is not just petty, it's a distortion of what the festive season should truly be about. So, not only is this claim petty, it paints King Charles in a very unflattering light as a father. Moving on, let's take a closer look at Richard Eden. Known for his journalistic forays into the lives of the royals, Eden has made a name for himself, but perhaps not in the most commendable of ways. His recent obsession with Meghan and Harry has been, at best, an unfortunate misdirection of his talents. Eden's efforts to paint Prince Harry as unwanted within his own family reflect a deep misunderstanding of the intricacies of the situation. It's not just about an invitation to Christmas lunch or a family gathering. It's about the freedom to choose one's own path, to step away from the glare of a life lived in the public eye. Harry's decision to distance himself from the royal family was not an act of rebellion, but a choice for personal peace and the well-being of his own family. Yet Richard Eden, with his relentless focus on the superficial aspects of this saga, misses this point entirely. His narratives, while perhaps alluring to some, only serve to perpetuate a misguided view. 
they paint a picture of a royal outcast, rather than a man making a stand for his own happiness. It's not about being unwanted. It's about wanting something different. And Eden's failure to grasp this simple truth is indicative of his own lack of understanding and empathy. To him, the royal family's dramas are merely fodder for his columns, devoid of the human emotions and complexities that they truly encapsulate. Moreover, his insistence on keeping Meghan and Harry in the spotlight, despite their clear desire for privacy, is not just intrusive but also counterproductive. It only fuels the very narrative they are trying to escape from, while simultaneously demonstrating a profound lack of respect for their wishes. Thus, Richard Eden's attempts to cast Harry as unwanted only serve to showcase his own lack of understanding and empathy. Next, let's examine the narrative of Harry being unwanted. A narrative has been spun, a tale that suggests that Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, is unwanted by his royal family. One must ask, who stands to gain from such a narrative? It is not the Duke of Sussex, whose life has been under the microscope since his birth. It is the media and the gossip mongers who profit from this narrative, spinning a web of intrigue and controversy. It's important to remember that Harry's decision to step back from royal duties was not an act of defiance or a symptom of being unwanted. It was a personal choice, a decision made after much contemplation and discussion. It was a decision made for the sake of his family, his wife, Meghan Markle, and their children. This was a decision to prioritise mental health and personal happiness over duty and tradition. To label Harry as unwanted is to ignore the complexities of the situation. It is to disregard the struggles that he has faced, the pressures of living in the public eye, and the courage it took to step away from it all. It is a narrative that fails to consider the man beneath the royal title, the human being beneath the crown. So let's discard this narrative. Let's put aside the notion that Harry is unwanted, because at the end of the day, it isn't about being wanted or unwanted. It's about making choices that are right for oneself and one's family. It's about forging one's own path, regardless of the expectations and pressures that come with a royal title. It's important to revisit the salient points made throughout this video. We've delved into the murky depths of obsession that certain figures, notably Richard Eden and King Charles, have displayed towards Meghan and Harry, a fixation that continues to be both baffling and concerningly relentless. We began by discussing the perplexing fascination that seems to pervade the royal sphere, a fixation that has unfortunately found its way into the media. We then moved on to the Christmas invitation debacle, a scenario that, when analysed, only served to reveal the deep-rooted issues within the royal family and the media that covers them. Richard Eden, in particular, has been a prominent figure in this narrative. His attempts to portray Harry as unwanted, coupled with his unwavering scrutiny of the prince, have only highlighted his own lack of understanding and empathy. It's a pitiful spectacle watching a man strive to paint a picture that only he seems to believe, a picture that is not only unkind but also deeply flawed. We then moved on to the unwanted narrative that Eden and others have been so keen to propagate. It's a narrative that fails to consider Harry's own feelings towards his family, his own choices and his own life. It's a narrative that is not only unfair but also incredibly damaging. As we conclude, we must remember that it's vital to stay critical of the media we consume and the narratives that are presented to us. It's easy to get swept up in the drama and the scandal, but it's important to remember that there are real people behind these stories, people who are just trying to live their lives. Thank you for tuning in to our channel today. Remember to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Until next time, stay informed and stay critical.